Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're gonna talk about sensing. Yes, does sport make you a sensor? That's a common question. I see people posting about how going to the gym makes them exercise their extroverted sensing. And if that's true, that's all great, but it's not. That's not how it works. That's not how you come into touch with extroverted sensing. No, extroverted sensing is a question of attention, concentration, on information, the ability to look at something for a long time and to absorb it and to inspect it and to draw information from it. Extroverted sensing is a task of being loud, of taking space, of saying here I am, look at me, guys, do you hear this, do you see this? It's about talking about what you're seeing and observing and sharing information. The sun is shining, do you see how good it is, do you feel how nice it is, do you feel how great it is to be here? Yes, true it is, when you go into sports you don't actually have to use sensing at all. Well, of course, sensing is always used, it's used unconsciously. But, as an intuitive, you can go to the gym and you can be completely detached from this physical exercise, from this physical activity. You can be at the gym and you can be imagining in your head various scenarios. You can be playing out various ideas, you can be thinking, thinking, thinking as you're doing and pulling all these levers and you're doing all these actions but it has nothing to do with sensing. Now often if you look at sports at an, at an elite level like it's not about sensing at all, it doesn't have to be sensing at all in its nature. Lots of top athletes are intuitives and what they do is they imagine themselves winning. They imagine themselves running faster than anyone. They see before themselves how they are boxing and putting in the punches and how they are beating their opponents. And this vision, this idea gives them energy. Yes, as an intuitive, that's how you get energy. That's how you get through your work ethics and your work and your physical exercise. You have to engage in sports as an intuitive activity. You have to think about going to the gym and you have to think about and envision and use it as a mental action. For an NJ it's all about mental discipline and practicing mental fortitude, honing your thoughts towards one purpose, channeling your ideas towards one core purpose. That is how you can use and how you can engage in sports and physical exercise as an intuitive judging type. As an intuitive, uh, imagine yourself in different scenarios. As a feeler, daydream. Daydream a lot. See yourself uh, fighting a dragon as you're pulling the levers in the machines. Imagine yourself in a forest running around. Like Find ways to stimulate your senses and aesthetics. Uh, imagine yourself in a positive situation. Think about relationships. Think about life as you go through these situations. You don't have to engage in sensing to do physical exercise and physical exercise boosts all your functions not just your sensing. Physical exercise boosts your feeling and your sense of balance. Physical exercise boosts your thinking and your ability to deal with mechanical tasks and activities, puzzles, logical questions, questions of how to make dinner or how to arrange a situation or how to make a, a, and prepare a plan for a project. Physical exercise boosts your intuition. When you're out walking, you think better than when you're sitting in your couch. Your brain is literally often dead when you're sitting in a couch. When you're sitting still, when nothing is happening, there's no energy in here. There's nothing happening in there. That's not intuition. Intuition is not apathy. And all of this carries a lot of... Uh, Misconceptions. The most common misconception is that if you're engaged in physical exercise or if you're good at it, you're a sensor. And a lot of it includes, of course, that if you're a sensor, you're a mindless drone. <laughs> you're a mindless drone. You can't think. You have no mental fortitude. You have nothing in there. And uh, of course, that's so far from the truth. Now, you'll see a lot of sensors in fields that require a lot of mental fortitude. You'll see them in computer fields like Microsoft, you'll see them uh, working in uh, media, you'll see them working in politics. And okay, I know some people see politicians as stupid, but it requires an immense awareness of strategy and of people and of how the world works. It requires you to consider a wide range of ideas and possibilities and perspectives and sensors can do that amazingly, splendidly. 
And it's all about like getting away from these biases to see yourself more fully. Because imagine if you think this to be true and you're an intuitive, then you might even feel blocked from engaging in these activities to begin with. As an intuitive, you might think you don't even need to exercise or work out. And in doing so, you're limiting your brain power, you're shutting half of yourself down. You're saying, I only need to work at 50% effectiveness when you're able to work at 100%. When you're looking at these tasks and you're telling yourself as a feeler that I can't engage in science and I can't understand it. And when you're going as a thinker, I don't understand emotional intelligence and I'm not even going to try. Then you're just limiting yourself and you're misunderstanding the question. The question is not what areas should you purely focus on. The question is how can you use your top letters as a strength to gain energy and passion in these activities? How can you as a feeler find the fun in science? How can you survive in the mindless road to memorization and the facts and the data as a feeling type? How can you as a thinking type engage in all the social levels and all the questions of app appropriateness and saying the right thing and managing people when you're coming at it from a question of strategy and logic and data? Often uh, that's the core challenge. That's kind of how you use your best self to your best extent. And if you can't do that, if you can't manage those situations, you're not going to do well in these activities. Now, thinking about it, does physical exercise make you more likely to use sensing? Maybe because we think that we have to go into these tasks purely physically. Maybe we think that we have to go into sports purely as a question of sensing. Maybe we think that when I'm at the gym, I can only be physical. I can't think. I can't daydream. I can't work on my ideas. I can't plan out my thoughts. But that's the error. You don't have to look at sports as a distraction from your head or from your ideas or from what you find fun, from your friends and from what you enjoy. You can see it as a booster of this very activity. You can think of it as a time where you're gonna get more energy and more use so you can get better ideas. Yeah, you can get better ideas at the gym than you might have gotten if you stayed at home. Yeah, you can make friends at the gym. Yeah, you can reflect on emotions and introspect at the gym. Yeah, you can think about yourself and who you are while you're lifting. <laughs> and like... That's also something that I'm telling you because I'm really just telling it to myself. I don't work out. I should. I'm getting a gym card to this Wednesday. And I feel free to hold me accountable for this. Feel free to tell me a month from now, Eric, so how is your gym exercise going? Feel free to make this a meme. Feel free to make parody videos of me and my gym card if I don't actually work out. If I don't actually put myself out there to actually get some energy into me. I need uh, this. Uh, I need this. I definitely do. I realize that. I need to stop being so passive. I need to start getting back out there. And I will say, I've been to the gym before. I've been there for years. Uh, it's just that I kind of fell off the wagon. And that's not good. And I want to say, like, uh, as a kid growing up, sports was a very interesting activity. Like, it was a very weird experience for me. Uh, I was never good at it. I went to a class where everyone else was a sports yak, a soccer player. Everyone in my class played soccer. Some, most of them at the professional level. And then there was me. And people threw balls at me and I was like, no. <laughs> but still I had fun. I had a lot of fun with those people. And uh, I had fun in those situations. And I loved a lot of it. I was not good at it, but people let me participate anyways. And they didn't care if I was good or bad. They had fun anyways. And they, um, yeah, it was a very inclusive environment. So I had a great time in all of that. And that's something I think a lot of people might have struggled with in the past. Perhaps they got demotivated from all these experiences because uh, their school and their friends and uh, the people around them didn't, think, didn't uh, invite them in or didn't make them feel welcome. And uh, that's also something worth getting over. Like if you don't like sports because of the negative experiences you had with other people, Find out if you can find a way around that. Can you find a way to 
find the sports and people around you that you can do it with that will be accepting and fun and entertaining to be around. That's my five cents on physical exercise and intuition and sensing. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.